Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be looking at some problems that use Newton's second law for torque. I'm talking about this equation right here, torque equals I times alpha. Technically, that's supposed to be net torque, and torque even has its own equation. Of course, torque equals force times distance, and then sine theta if it's at an angle. I is the moment of inertia, which describes how easy or difficult it is to turn something. Usually they give it to you in the problem. If not, we have a whole table of equations that you can use to find moment of inertia, depending on what shape it is. And then alpha is the angular acceleration. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's look at this first problem. I have a wheel and the wheel has a mass of 10 kilograms with a radius of three meters. And I'm gonna be pulling on this wheel perfectly perpendicular to the center with a force of 150 newtons. And my question's going to be, how many revolutions do we complete in 12 seconds? So there's the problem. Let's go ahead and get started. We are going to use Newton's second law for torque because we gotta find that angular acceleration. So what that means is net torque equals I times alpha. There's only one force going on here. It's the 150 Newton force pulling the wheel. So that torque is equal to force 150 times the distance. It's this distance right here, which is the radius of the wheel, three meters. So the distance is three. And then sine theta, I don't even need to include because it is 90 degrees apart. As you can see, radius and force are 90 degrees. Sine of 90 is one. So I don't even need to include that. 150 times three is 450 and that's equal to I times alpha. Now, if I want to find moment of inertia, I, I would say that this shape is a disc. I probably should have mentioned that earlier, but I'm saying it now. And the moment of inertia for a disc has the equation I equals one half MR squared. Again, you can get this from a table or an equation list. You probably don't have to memorize this. So the mass we said was 10, radius is three, and you plug this in a calculator and you're gonna get 45, and who cares about the units? Although I'll tell you, it's kilogram times meters squared. Probably doesn't matter, you can just write 45. So what that means is 450 is equal to 45 times alpha, and if I wanna solve for alpha, just divide 45 on both sides, and alpha is equal to 10. Again, units don't matter, but in case you're curious, it is radians per second squared for alpha, angular acceleration. But now what? This is not the final answer because I wanted to solve for how many revolutions am I completing in 12 seconds. Hopefully you realize this is a kinematics, a rotational kinematics problem, which means that I am going to write out my five kinematic variables, omega initial, angular speed, initial and final, alpha, time, and displacement delta theta. We are starting from rest. Again, I didn't say that, but I should have wrote it somewhere. Oh well. Omega initial is zero. Omega final is unknown. We have no idea what it is. Alpha is what we just found. It's 10. The time is 12. And delta theta is what I'm solving for because I want to know how many revolutions I'm completing. So I'm going to choose the equation that does not have omega final in it. Again, I don't think you have to have this memorized, but it doesn't hurt. And it's going to be this equation, delta theta equals omega initial times time plus one half alpha t squared. I have all these numbers except for delta theta, which is what I'm solving for. So omega initials zero, time is 12, plus one half times alpha 10 times time 12 squared. Plug this in a calculator and you'll get 720. Be very careful, this is not the final answer because this is just 720 radians, not revolutions. If I want to convert to revolutions, I got to multiply by the conversion factor. Denominator, two pi radians. Numerator, one revolution or rotation. That allows radians to cancel out. So really, I'm just dividing my answer by two pi. And I'll get an answer of 114.6, and that's revolutions. Sometimes it asks for complete revolutions. If that were the case, I would just say 114. But since it didn't say complete revolutions, I'm fine with this answer. So that's it for the first one. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. 
I've got one more that I want to look at today, and this one will be harder. Let's say I'm hanging up a bar against the side of a wall, and I put a nail through it so that it's allowed to rotate this way and that way. Now, as you can figure out, if nothing is touching this board, then the bar is just going to fall this way because of gravity. And then it will be in the lower position like this. So my question is, at this point in time, when it is released, I would like you to find the angular acceleration of this board. Keep in mind, I do have a mass for this board. It is three kilograms and the length is going to be 80 centimeters, which honestly I should just convert to meters immediately, which is 0.8 meters. And so now the question is, I want to find alpha. To do that, I need to think of the forces acting on this bar. The only force acting on it is gravity, and you have three options here. Gravity either points here at the center, it points here in the middle, or it points here at the end and the location does matter. Which one do you think? You can pause the video, try and guess. And the solution is, it is the middle one. And the reason why it's the middle one is because of center of gravity. The force of gravity always acts on an object's center of gravity, meaning the middle of the object. So FG goes in the middle. The reason why that's important is because when I'm calculating torque, torque equals force times distance times sine theta, the force is Fg, so mass times gravity, times distance, times sine theta, and now I can plug in some numbers here. Mass is three, G is 9.8. The distance is gonna be this distance right here. It's the distance from my pivot point to the force of gravity. That is one half of the total length, total length being 0.8 meters. So that means this is only 0.4 meters as the distance to the center of gravity. So that's 0.4 right here. And then sine theta, I didn't give you an angle, but since force points down and the distance points to the right, this is 90 degrees apart from each other, meaning sine of 90 is one, so I don't even need to include sine theta. And usually you don't need to include sine theta if I don't give you an angle. That's it for the left side of the equation. Remember, torque is equal to I times alpha. So this torque, three times 9.8 times 0.4, which I can plug in my calculator, gets me 11.76 is equal to the moment of inertia. This is a rod hinged at the end. Let me erase some stuff to make it more clear. And because it's a rod hinged at the end, moment of inertia I for a rod at the end is equal to one third ML squared, where it's the whole length. So one third times mass three times length we said it was 0.8 and we are gonna square that. One third and three cancel, and you're gonna get 0.64 for the moment of inertia. And so I'm gonna plug that in right here, 0.64 times alpha, just divide both sides by 0.64, and we'll get alpha equals 18.4, and the units are radians per second squared. And that's all I wanted for this one, I just wanted alpha, the angular acceleration. And so that's all the problems I wanted to look at in this video. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.